Okay, so here's what we're going to do. If you are interested in the Snap-on stuff, this is a couple of the catalogs. Some of the stuff are great deals. Some of it, not as good of a deal as, like, you just have to do a little bit of investigation. You probably don't need a snap on dead blow, okay? Just, you, you don't need a $57 dead blow. You can buy a cheaper dead blow. But some of the stuff, like a good 100 tooth ratchet, it's, it's a pretty good price and some of that stuff. So um, some of the measuring tools, there's only a small, like one page of measuring tools. That stuff I felt like was a pretty good price. Just peruse, it, it'll be between you and the snap-on guy. All I will do is when you, um, if you would, if you're interested, scan that little QR code, and then that'll connect you with him, and then I'll, he'll just say, is Austin really a student? And I'll say, no. And, um, and so that's how you get your discount. And so it's roughly 50% off all of the tools that they have thrown together in that, which is quite a bit of stuff. So not a snap-on salesman, I don't get any kind of kickback. I'm gonna buy a handful of things, you buy them or not, it doesn't make any difference to me. I just, this is what, what's, what's the deal there? So I don't know, so this is the catalog he gave me specifically for students, but he said I get you a 50% discount on at least this and some other stuff too. So super nice guy, um, his name, his contact information, if you maybe just wanna take a whole picture of the Whole thing there that way you have his information you can email him or something like that um, I would say I think it's important to have the tools that are necessary to do the job so um, I think it's I think buy buy good stuff and it lasts forever you never have a problem with it I'm a little partial to Mac tools um, snap offs are fine too though so do you know whatever you want to do do they do like fingerprints also that they're much Yeah, so they do. Um, but I, so just fine print, and I used to work for Mac Tools, and I we used to have this happen to people all the time. Um, the fine print at the bottom of that says your Snap-on account has a max of eleven thousand dollars. You should not have eleven thousand dollars worth of tool debt. Okay, so please don't max these things out. Uh, that's all I'm saying in that. Like so. Right, yeah. Right, go to something that's comfortable, you know, that you can handle. They'll, they, now, so typically what they do is they sell your account to a bank, and then so you're you're actually paying the bank. So, Eli, you would have the check that goes to, uh, you'd pay your you have bank payment. You so would pay the like one guy. So, uh, furniture places go through, they sneak through the bank? Exactly. Okay. So, they, they typically try to go through a local bank, um, which makes sense, because that snap on guy's not going to carry you guys, like, that doesn't make sense, you know. So he's going to sell that to them or give that to them, and then they'll manage it. But um, I think um, because Snap-on is connected to NC3, I think Snap-on is going to be pretty pretty friendly with us. So if you want to negotiate some prices with them, I think that you can probably do that. Uh, what they're looking for is future um, tool addicts. Okay, so he's going to give you a little bit of crack uh, just so you can get hooked on the good stuff and um, so that's that's the goal okay if i buy tools like i buy dice if it's broken or not. like you buy dice it's for D&D. okay yeah so no girlfriend that's cool mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> she buys it too surprisingly really yeah. um yeah that's weird yeah i, I definitely <laughs> I, I can't get too deep into the snap on stuff it'll be a hole that i'll never come back out of so i know that for sure about me all right so uh with that yeah, I think as you buy, as you look for tools, you feel free to come to me and say, hey, I found this tool. Is this a good price or not? I've got a couple places that um, I can get them from fairly cheap. I'll tell you if it's a good deal or not. Um, nothing wrong with buying tools that are used from somebody else. Every once in a while you can find micrometers at a garage sale or an auction. Sometimes they're good, sometimes they're C claims, you know? So be cautious on those kinds of things. Um, how, because I have a set of uh, needle pointed micrometers. That oh, okay. You send me. Yeah. And I mean, like, I haven't used them because I'm too nervous that I'll, like, bend a tip. Are those, like, pretty good ones, or is it better to kind of stick with the flat face one? So, those are kind of specialty ones. So, it's going to be, those are going to be valuable for something. Okay. And so, what I would do is I would plan to put them in my box, not necessarily a school box, but put them in your box. When you need them, they will be invaluable to you. Okay. You know, because I've got some that I use 
once every five years. But okay. when I need them, I need them. Yeah. You know, so those are those are good ones. Those are good ones to have. And he came out of the machine shop as well, so I can all, if I'm lucky, yeah. now and then he sends me free tools. Absolutely. Like blade micrometers, blade depth mics, or, you know, whatever. Anything that you can accumulate is just going to be valuable to okay. you. Even if it's a tool, even if somebody tries to give you kind of a junky, trashy micrometer, might be a time where you, you may need to do some modification to it and use it for something else. Um, I wouldn't pitch it uh, unless it's just total trash. You know, you could probably find a way. So my son works for Haas, and he's a service tech. And he says all the time, he's like, I have got the weirdest wrenches, things that we have made, welded, fabricated for the for the bolt that you've got to snake around. You know, like you you you're outside of the shop trying to turn it. You know, that's that's how hard it is. He's like, and so he goes, I just collect janky Allen wrenches, and I wait until I need them to do something, and. He's like, it just works really good for me. So yeah, we were talking about that last night. I usually call him on the way home and we talk a little bit about how, you know, he hates customers and I was a customer and I was like, that's funny because we hate service guys. And um, so, you know, I, I would I would just start planning to build that tool selection now. There's just good general tools, good precision measuring tools, inspection tools, all kinds of those things. So um, we're going to keep talking about inspection tools and we're going to keep being on um, a lab plan here. And um, so today I'm going to break you into some different groups and I want you to start to work with um, some different tools. And I thought I had broken them down on a piece of paper, but I may not have. Oh yeah, I did. Um, let's see. So I have one. Um, round piece, it's got several threads on it, kind of looks like this guy, um, but it's got, it's got maybe a back on it, maybe not. And um, I want you to identify the threads on it. So um, there's four, five sets of threads on there. So you're going to need your toolboxes, don't get them yet. But you're going to need your toolboxes today, as well as some additional stuff. So I've got on here, you're going to need a thread micrometer, you're going to use the optical comparator. So you guys are masters of the optical comparator now. You're going to use the OD micrometer. If you do PMI, then you at least know the parts of the micrometer. You know how to read the micrometer a little bit. Um, we're going to look at pitch gauges. We also talked about those things in it and PMI. Um, so pitch gauge, OD mic, optical comparator, thread mic um, are going to be the things for these guys right here. And I'll give you guys if these as a set or as a group. Um, then you're going to have a, you're going to do something with this guy here. Um, and this is just, these are just student made projects. And um, if you're lucky, you might get one of Jeff's ones that he did. Did you make one of these? Um, I'm not sure that I did make one. Okay. On that one, you're going to need some gauge pins, similar to gauge blocks. Um, you're going to need thread gauges as well. Uh, you're going to be able to use your calipers on this if needed. I think you will. And you also use the optical comparator on this. So it's, it's all the tools that we've kind of talked about in PMI that we talked about um, in the book. Chapter 11 was threads and then using the optical comparator. Optical comparator will do threads. Um, when you get to that point, I can help you out with that. And so everybody needs a sheet. And one of them has two sheets. So you can probably take one from the top and one from the bottom. Uh, one of the bottom ones is going to be insignificant to you. It's about it's some machining instructions on that. You won't need that. So one from the top, it's really two from the bottom, but one of those will be just a scrap paper. And then I've got on my screen the student view of Canvas so that you will know your assignments today. Just these assignments are two assignments, and they're going to be due um, Sunday night at 11.59 and a half. Now we probably just left it behind. Um, let's see, one, two, three, five, um, six, one more, one more. And is there 12, there's what? No, I need 12 to be there. Two, 
almost everybody's done. So once you get those, let me just reiterate what we got due. These are with PDFs. Um, they are over the PDFs, yeah. Everything that we've done PDF-wise, not just the books, but PDF there. Um, next week will be Module 3. Module 3 is already out there if you want to be perusing it ahead of time. We're going to talk, be talking about surface finish. We're going to be talking about metals and alloys. Uh, hardness testing. We'll do some hardness testing, and we'll do some... Um, I think we'll probably have some time to do some heat treatment as well. So we'll get, get the ovens fired up, do a little bit of heat treatment, and, um, and they, you know, rock well a couple samples that we do from there, see where we have problems at and where we don't have problems at. Um, the idea, so ultimately by the time that you get done with this class, you should be um, generally well prepared to go into like something like a QC ring. So you've touched everything, you're not necessarily master at everything. But you'll know how to use a Galpix comparator, you know how to use a CMM, you know how to use a surface um, uh, hardness testing, uh, surface finish gauges, uh, pretty much everything that you need to do that. Okay, so here's what I want you to do. Let's go. We'll do twos today. So um, you two are already at a table. You two are already at a table. Um, let's do... Um, 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 you two... Okay, and um, let's do YouTube and then YouTube. Okay, that seems like roughly evenly. I'm gonna switch you way back in the back or you up front. It's either way. Um, so you have all the time till three o'clock to work on these. Um, you will need to go out to the shop to get some things. When you're ready to start going out to the shop to get some things, I'll help you walk out there and, and kind of identify where everything's at. Because then in the future, uh, you should be able to go and get those things yourself. So when I say, hey, go get the gauge pins, you'll know where they are. That will keep you from having to go and get them for you. All right, so I think that's it. Grab two parts. Get your partner and go. So there's three holes you want to